All right, guys, let's check out another fun watch from the Revolver brand. Still putting out some cool watches. This is the SD1. So full disclaimer, they when they send in a watch, they don't expect it returned. So this is given to the channel. So that's why you'll see over here in this corner or wherever the heck they put it, the uh, paid advertisement, um, you know, writing. So that's all that means. They sent the watch in for a video. I do the video, I keep the watch, I do whatever the heck I want with it. So now that that's out of the way, let's get into what we are looking at here. 43 millimeter case on this guy, measured from the sides. A 51 lug to lug, but that's all the way, all the way to the very outer edge. It might be closer to 50, really, if you're being realistic. You can see that huge oversized signed and loomed crown. Tons of traction on that. That's eight and a half millimeter on that crown. So 15 millimeter thick from the display case back to the top of the flat sapphire crystal, which is chamfered and raised just above, just sits barely proud of the bezel insert here, which I think is sapphire. It could be mineral, but I, sus I suspect that is also sapphire. Um, but mineral is the dial. The dial is mineral, and I think the case back is probably mineral. So it's fully skeletonized. It's really cool. Uh, 22 millimeter lug width there, and the watch weighs in at 136 gram. So let's check out this dial because it is wild. Of course, you have a heavy application of C3 printed on loom for the indices and the chapter on there. And then just revolver automatic 300 meter water depth rating. But you can see clearly the movement and they even skeletonize. Oh, so I had to look this up. Get this, guys. This is using the Seiko NH70. When have you ever heard the NH70 as a movement? So the Seiko NH70 is based off the NH35, which is a 24 joule uh, automatic movement. You can you know hack it and wind it and all that stuff. Uh, but where the NH70 difference differentiates from the NH35 is they do a little more skeletonizing on the top side so you can see it through these dials. It's usually just like an open heart or something like that. Uh, but it's also used in this case with, you know, you can see everything. So they kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a smoked, you know, it's not just blatantly clear. So it is interrupted a little bit, but you, you get it in the right light and you can even see the balance and everything going on there. Of course, you can see some jewels from the top side and you can see them from the bottom side. It is also interrupted on the display case back with that rifling type thing, you know, because of the tie to firearms and everything like that. And in the barrel of most firearms, they should be rifled unless you're shooting really old uh, black powder or something, but even the more modern ones are rifled. But you can see an H70 la labeled on the rotor, which is very cool. I wouldn't have known otherwise. Well, I guess it says it in their website. I'll put a link to their website in the de description down below. You can click on that. And I'll put a link to, I think it's called Caliber Corner, where I read up a little bit more on the NH70. It's a good resource if you're looking up information on movements. It gives you like the lift angle and all that stuff. So if you have a time graph where you need to adjust your lift angle on there so you can get accurate reading. Because most of the time the lift angle is preset on those uh, time graphers at 52, which is, you're still going to get a good reading, but it should be adjusted to 53 on, or whatever your lift angle is on your movement. 120 click bezel on this guy, unidirectional. Very crisp, no play, and consistent throughout its range, and it lines up. Interesting colorway on this one. They call this one the Aquaman. Aquaman. So there are some other colorways. This is the one they sent me. I really like it. It's not, um, you know, just like a, a very rich green. It's more of a uh, uh, softer green, I guess. And it doesn't really match. The green on the bezel doesn't really match the green minute hand. 100%. It's a little off, but I like that. It's a nice contrast. Helium escape valve on a 300 meter water death rating case. Kind of unnecessary, but it's there, so whatever. Uh, let's pop this guy on the wrist, and then we'll do a loom shot, because the loom is awesome on it, as you would expect with C3. I could be alone in this. I'm actually not a huge fan of these, uh, I guess... I don't know what you call it, isoframe style straps. 
I know ISO, that's probably a brand. This is not an isoframe strap, but I don't know how else to describe it. So, I mean, it works fine. It helps balance out the heavier watch heads and stuff like that. It's just, it's not my preference. Maybe I would warm up to it. I don't know. But there it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It wears and looks nice. I would suspect this could get some attention on wrist. I think maybe people would be like, hey, what is that? I could be wrong. Oh, let me see if I can get this off. I see, I think this is what I don't really care for these is I feel, I feel a little clumsy with them. But again, like I said, maybe I would warm up to it. I just feel clumsy with it. That's why I like the uh, vulcanized rubber or FKM rubber, but that might be too light of a strap for this watch. I could be wrong on that. All right, let's kill the lights. Check the loom on this. Uh, before we do that, though, you know what I usually do? I didn't get, really get it out, but here it is side by side with an SKX. Just for a size comparison, I know some people appreciate that. So you can kind of see size-wise. A lot of people know, have owned, or still currently do own an SKX, so it's a good reference point. All right, let's kill the lights and check out the killer loom on this thing. $419 is the price tag on these. Yeah, awesome, awesome loom. And a nice, heavy application of loom on the crown. It's clearly visible on that guy. Nothing on the case, but oh, you know what? Because it's skeletonized, you can kind of see the loom from the back side, from the dial, that is bizarre. I don't even know what I'm seeing over there. It's probably like that triangle or something up there or that indice. That is fun. This is such a cool watch. So thanks for watching, guys, and big thanks to the guys over at Revolver for sending this over. I look forward to more watches from you guys. Honestly, it's it's fun to see the, the progression that the uh, brand is going through. They, they're constantly just stepping their game up. I can tell the quality... Um, it was already pretty good in the earlier models, but you can tell like a little bit better each one. So I'm curious to see how the uh, brand evolves. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next vid.